All right, boys, what's up? So we're here to finally finish off the fate tier list, the fate rankings for all of the anime servants. I'll probably keep moving forward with this, uh, going into stuff like FGO and everything, if you guys would like to see stuff like that. Because, again, I really do like to talk about fate. It's just a nice little thing that I can do on the side to keep a steady flow of content coming while I'm also working on other videos. Um, So, yeah, this one, though, because of how whack Apocrypha is... This video might be crustier than a gas station bathroom. This might be a little bit whack because the way that Fate Apocrypha portrays a lot of those characters, like a lot of their characters, it just changes vastly depending on what media you're consuming. So let's say you're reading the novel versus watching the anime versus reading the manga versus playing the Apocrypha event in FGO. Literally all of them have different spins on the power levels for a lot of these characters, right? You know, sometimes it's Achilles and Karna are supposed to be rivals. Sometimes it's supposed to be uh, Karna is the strongest person in all of uh, Apocrypha. Sometimes Shiro Amakusa is the strongest person. And sometimes he's literally Dookie Dogwater. So I'm going to try to take some of the best interpretations for each character and just give them the maximum benefit of the doubt. So I just kind of wanted to float that in there as we're going into this. You have to keep in mind that there are four different interpretations for the apocrypha grail war and they are all just all over the place so i guess with that being said first and foremost we'll just knock out some of the easy ones that would be karna and achilles now karna is de facto pretty much one of the strongest people in apocrypha no matter which interpretation you go with it is like he's kind of big dickus you know what i'm saying like he's the guy you know, it doesn't matter if it was Jean who was a ruler. It doesn't matter if Vlad went into his crazy Spurgy vampire form. I mean, he kind of just claps up everybody that he encounters, right? And um, he's even said by Shiro Amakusa to pretty much be his trump card. Now, in the manga, it's uh, Karna and Achilles is uh, what uh, Shiro Amakusa thinks are his trump cards, right? Because when he's uh, when he's planning out the Grail War, he's like, well... We're in Romania and we have to fight Vlad, but he's like, as long as we either have Lancer or Ryder, we should be able to just mop him up pretty easily. And as we see um, in Vlad and Karna's fight, it does look like Karna's doing pretty well and looks like he's about to actually win the fight, even though Vlad is under his own domain, which is absolutely insane. So Karna has pretty much all the merit in the world to be up in this tier. And it's more like Achilles is also really strong. But he kind of rides off the fact that he's supposed to be this equal rival or this equal servant of important, uh, importance for the Red Faction. Um, there's also a thing that also just gets them up here definitively, and that is just that Karna is said to be like Gilgamesh's equal. Uh, they're supposed to be like these equal rival characters as well, so that kind of also just securely gets them up in EX. Amakusa, okay. Amakusa is a bit weird sometimes. I think if you want to be consistent, you just slap him in A+. Plus because he does beat up Vlad, right? And Vlad goes into his vampire form and Amakusa pretty consistently just kind of beats the mess out of him when it was like this consistent thing that like all of the other servants had to gang up on him. Although there's some situations where like Karna was actually kind of ragdolling um, the, uh, the Vlad that was flying around and Achilles was also doing very well as well because those are the only two that really get to 1v1 the Vlad for a little bit and they actually do pretty good. So it's just a matter of like, where are you putting Amakusa, right? It seems to be fairly consistent that at the very least, um, he should still be under people like Karna and Achilles because both Karna and Achilles pretty consistently threaten Shiro Amakusa's life um, a couple of times. They're always like, if you hurt our master or if you betray us or if you get in my way or you're doing something like X, Y, or Z, they're like, oh, I will murder you. And Amakusa's like, oh, okay, I guess I don't want to mess with those guys. Like, I don't want to get b -b -b bodied, you know? So seems pretty consistent to at least put him in here though because Vlad would probably also, if I just want to put him up here, I would also probably rank him up there as well. Even though when he's not in his domain, he's not as strong, he still does have the Legend of Dracula thing, which pretty much allowed him to just wombo combo solo the entire war, basically. Basically, like the entire factions that were there. So that was a bit insane. Also, another easy servant to get up there is Siegfried, and that's because Siegfried scales directly to Karna. Um, let's keep in mind that the Siegfried that Sieg was using was not nearly as strong as the Siegfried that would have been fighting Karna himself. So it's like 
Siegfried manages to, with a little bit of outside help from, you know, Astolfo and Achilles' shield, is still managing to fight off and, like, be pretty even with Karna. It's just, like, then if you just made that actual Siegfried, it's like, it's just the fight just gets even better, right? It's an unquantifiable jump up, but we do know that he's already pretty even with Karna, and that it would just be even better if it was the real Siegfried. So that's a pretty easy one to do. Um, this is actually where things get a little odd as well. Because then we have Mordred, who people are going to be like, why is Mordred not with Siegfried? Is Mordred not a rival to Siegfried? The thing that people forget is that when Mordred and Siegfried fight, Mordred is drastically amped during the fight. Like, she is under command spell amps from her, her master. And this is the first time Sieg is using Siegfried's body, right? So he is, like, the most unexperienced, and he actually does, and if you read the novelization... Sieg gets stronger every time he uses Siegfried's transformation as he becomes more like Siegfried. So it's like literally the most unexperienced and the weakest form of Sieg's version of Siegfried is fighting a Mordred that is at full power and is being amped by command spell. So when you look at that, it's just like, oh yeah, probably not as consistently going to be that high, right? But, and then the other thing that kind of bumps her into A tier is that she's not as strong as Lancelot, right? We know that Lancelot is pretty much de facto the strongest person of the Knight of the Round Table. Although, maybe you could disagree. Maybe you'd be like, well, what about, um, uh, oh, the person that's inhabiting Mash's body? You guys know him. Galahad, that's what I'm thinking of. He's like, maybe you could say Galahad because he's the, the Grail Knight. Maybe he has like a bit of like extra lore that puts him above Lancelot. But Lancelot's pretty much generally referred to as the strongest Knight of the Round Table. And we know that Mordred is not on his level. But we also do know that Mordred is stronger than Artoria. And people are going to be like, well, I mean, didn't Mordred, like, lose to Artoria? And it's like, no, not particularly, because people forget that Artoria got fresh off the boat, walked up to Mordred and started fighting her, but they forget that Mordred had been fighting literally all day to the point where she is actually exhausted. In the anime adaptation, we actually see her propping herself up on her sword because she can barely stand she's been fighting all day. And then even then... In just a few strikes, she overpowers Artoria by disarming her, which shows that like she is stronger in the fight. And Artoria has to pull out Ranga Miniad to kill Mordred, which one, Saber Artoria doesn't have, and two, that's kind of chatty if someone needs to pull out Ranga Miniad to kill you. So um, yeah, so she's pretty definitively above Artoria, but she is not on the level of someone like Siegfried. Um, I hope that is makes sense to everybody, and like everybody's kind of clear on that one. Um Next, I guess we could go see the rest of these guys are a little crusty. They're a little weird to scale. So like, for instance, we know from Fey Grand Order that Avisa Braun is actually quite a strong servant. Um, He actually fights Adelante Altar in Lost Belt 1 and actually manages the beater because we actually do find out that Avisa Braun is quite the good fighter and he's actually very, very good Um as a caster with how quick he's able to like make golems and everything the problem with the visa Bron though is that he's kind of like medea like while i want to put him really high the problem is that he's very reliant on the materials around him it's very hard to say how well a visa Bron does against a lot of people because we know that he can do extremely well and he could be this ultra chatty person i mean he created the atom golem that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with um uh, the Lost Belt 1 King Ivan, right? And they were pretty evenly matched. So it's like this guy could be all over the place just depending on like what material he has. And it's the same thing for Medea, right? That's why Medea is like in quotations like super low, right? Like there's, there should be like this asterisk right here, you know what I'm saying? Because these people, they're not bad. They're extremely powerful. It's just the problem is that they're very reliant and like very situational, right? So yeah, I'm I'm just gonna have to stick him down here just for consistency sake. But do keep in mind, I'm acknowledging that he could literally be anywhere over around here. Um then we have Chiron. Chiron scales up with Achilles. Um it's more consistent in Fate, uh, Fate Grand Order, where they kind of have Chiron and Achilles being the uh, last two people remaining in the whole Grail War, and they're kind of like holding it down. Like uh, Chiron and Achilles, that, that's the other thing too. In the FGO event, Chiron and Achilles are literally fighting the entire, um, all the other servants from Fate Apocrypha, and they're like holding it down. And then uh, Sieg joins them, and they're like, oh, we're just going to slowly start converting them back to our side. But it's insane that they are like fighting people like Siegfried, Karna, and like all these other people all at the same time, and they are still holding it down. Like, they're they're both pretty cracked, and um, Chiron does scale up with Achilles. In fact, if people don't know, 
in the novel when Chiron and Achilles are fighting, right? Like people remember them having their little fist fight where they're boxing with each other. Um, Chiron would have won that, but literally in the last second, and you can call it an ass pull if you want, Achilles develops a new noble phantasm. The punch that he does on Chiron is like a new noble phantasm that he develops, and he just punches Chiron to kill him, which is absolutely insane, right? Like you can think about it what you will, but Chiron was winning that fight and he was going to win, which I think is pretty obvious. But next we can move on. Let's go with Semiramis. I think Semiramis is also pretty good to go with. She's more of Mordred's rival than anybody else. The problem is that like, it's really dependent on the situation for them. We know that like Semiramis has a lot of like insane magics and poisons and stuff, but it just kind of depends if she's in the garden or not. And so since I'm not allowing a lot of other people to get their big mega super weapons, like he's not going to get the big Cthulhu monster. They're not going to be completely set up. They're going to be remaining there. But even still, um, there's scenes where like they're in the church and Semiramis when Mordred is, you know, still in the helmet and she goes with Shishigo to talk with Shiramakus and they're like, oh, we're actually going to do things on our own. Um, As they're leaving, Semiramis asks Amakusa, she's like, do you want me to just kill Mordred? Like, I'll just drop her right now. And Amakus is not like, no, you can't do that because you would die. He's like, no, let's not kill them because they might be like a very valuable asset. So even like Amakusa, who, you know, even consistently is a very high up top tier servant, um, even he is acknowledging like, mm, yeah, you probably could do that. Like the fact that it's even being entertained by him uh, does show that he definitely believes that she can do it. Like it's not out of her uh, realm of possibility. And we see that when they fight that she's got some pretty insane poisons and stuff that just wreck Mordred like during the entire fight. And she even tanks, like, Mordred, like, chopping her in half. Because then Semiramis appears, like, five minutes later. And she's just, like, she's like, oh, yeah, that was fine. That was whatever. I just took Clarent Blood Arthur to, you know, to the dome. So, yeah, she definitely probably deserves to be next to Mordred. I think she has enough showings that definitely put her there. Um, Frankenstein, I'm also just going to go ahead and give her the pass up there. Because Frankenstein can, she's kind of like a suicide bomb. But if she nukes somebody, she pretty much just blows them up, right? She pretty much just one-shots them. Because Mordred needed that command spell from Shishigo to tank Blasted Tree because she was going to get obliterated. And keep in mind, Sieg uses Blasted Tree to beat Shiramakusa. So in reality, she should probably be like here, honestly. Because it's just like, while she is just a big nuke, like someone like Arash that big nuke is extremely powerful like at bare minimum if frankenstein can't beat him in a fight she's probably just gonna blow them both up and probably just win that way so she's a little cracked on that so yeah i'm definitely actually gonna put her an a plus um shakespeare i think is a little sussy i mean he has like nice like he's like a bit of like mind hack jean and he can make very powerful noble phantasms like he gives shira amakusa a katana that negates noble phantasms like Shakespeare can definitely like do some pretty insane stuff, but as a fighter, my dude is not really popping off at all. He's really not doing a lot. Um, then we have Spartacus. Spartacus is another one that's a little hard to scale, but he should probably like just de facto, just by nature of what Spartacus is, probably just be like around where like Achilles or where Heracles is, because they both functionally say uh, serve the same purpose in their respective Grail Wars, where they're both just kind of like these checks, right, for their Grail Wards. It's like if you don't have some big mega laser thing that can just obliterate Spartacus in one shot, he's probably just going to outgrind you in the fight, right? He's just going to keep getting stronger and stronger. He's going to keep regenerating and everything. And it's just going to get to a point where he really can't deal with it. Like you, you really just got to either like just decapitate him at the beginning of the fight uh seal him away or just obliterate him right like it, it's very much like heracles where heracles is kind of like this dps check it's just like can you um can you out heracles with like he, him just being generally just a strong servant right not the strongest but just a very tr like strong servant in general and his noble phantasm make him very hard to out right he's just a very uh tanky dude and so they both functionally say they serve the same purpose there's a lot of these servants that really just can't deal with how spartacus functions um, the only person is maybe uh, Artoria could do it. But even then, um, you got to remember that, what's her name? Mordred tries to chop him in half after he started getting going. And he kind of just reforms himself. So even then, that's kind of what I'm putting slightly above right here. There, you're going to need either like some specific weird hacks 
uh, like a lot of these people up here have to really get around it, right? Like you're going to need to be someone like Vlad, who we have seen actually has the ability to completely shut down Spartacus as he just captures him alongside like Astolfo and the others at the very beginning. Uh, but we see that Vlad is definitely able to hold him down here. Just blow him up. You use a, uh, you chop your hand off and use the black hole noble phantasm. You use Vasavdi Shakti. You pull out literally whatever he wants, honestly. And you just completely obliterate them. The only thing is that like there are some weird matchups. Like even though Chiron scaling wise should be stronger than someone like Spartacus, there's really not a way for him to out Spartacus, right? There's like really not a way for him to get rid of him. So that's where these get like really interesting. And that even though this is being scaled in terms of strength, you got to remember that there are these like weird interactions, right? It's, you know, Chiron, maybe he like snipes his head off as graphic as that sound. And maybe that's how he deals with them. But it's the same thing for like, Salter, right? Like if these two with their giant laser beams can't out Spartacus, like how is she going to do it? Like, sure, she'll just keep beating him up, but I don't think she'll ever really be able to kill him unless Spartacus just nukes himself, right? Like as he did against Jean and Jean just completely blocked it. So yeah, that's that. Jean's going to go up next to Amakusa. She's supposed to be kind of like uh, the opposing side for Amakusa. And you know, when she pulls out La Poiselle, which is kind of like just her stronger version of uh blasted tree over here it forces amakusa to go all out as well and um she he she just completely messes up amakusa like even though amakusa kind of walks out of the fight just fine he is like exhausted he's lost a hand you know he is clearly not walking away from that fight with uh you know just you know, being normal so yeah basically she's just supposed to be a rival him but she can't crack up here because you know people like uh karna literally looked at her and jean was just like i'll just die like i, I can't beat him there's just no way but other things that also help her get in this tier is that in FGO, she just straight up beats Lancelot and Orleans. Um, she, she's literally just like, oh, you poor thing. I must look like somebody you know, and then just bonks him on the head and he just dies. So it's just like, it's like, okay, that's a, that's a little weird, <laughs> but okay, dude. So yeah, she definitely like scales with people that are in this tier. And I mean, with him being a rival to her and her just directly beating him, I think it's just fine to actually put her here where, you know, and then you have people like that who are just definitively better than her. So she fits pretty well there. Adelante is really weird to scale because Adelante's feats are all over the place. She's either like kind of this rival to Jean or she's like this secret EX tier, like random giga strong fighter, right? It just, it really depends right on which avenue and how charitable you're going to be because you could be like, well, she pretty much traded with Achilles, right? Like both basically died. Achilles killed her first and then she took some like random pot shots as she was dying and then shot him in the back. Um, arguable that that maybe would not have happened if Achilles one wasn't exhausted from his fight with Chiron and two, he, he's not actually really trying to like, he's not trying to like murder Adelante, right? Like even though the end result is that Adelante ends up dying, uh, Achilles' whole point is that he really wants to save her, right? He doesn't want to see her falling to despair. And then it's just ultimately he's like, oh, I, I do have to kill her, right? So it's like a, it's like a very hard thing for him to do. Um, and so maybe you could have slap her up there because of Adelante Alter. She also has some very odd showings where she like shoots through Siegfried's armor. She doesn't pierce his body, which people actually forget that it's actually stated that his skin is stronger than the armor. So the fact that like it pierces the armor is insane because armor of Fafnir is, is just ridiculous, right? It's such an insane NP. If you have not checked it out, I recommend going to like the wiki or the data books or something and giving it a read because it's pretty nuts broken. And like, even though she doesn't pierce the skin, that is the strongest part of Siegfried, it is dog. It's the fact that you can still get through armor of Fafnir. You could also try to argue that, um, Siegfried pushes the arrow through his body to get off the tree and you can maybe say that because the arrow has the capacity to do that she can in theory like her arrows are strong enough to do it but she just can't fire them hard enough if that makes sense so Adelante I'm just gonna say that like since we're being like charitable and nice we can actually stick her up in EX which is really hilarious next we have Astolfo and Jack um Astolfo is pretty odd showings but I think it's pretty consistent that Astolfo is pretty low. Like Astolfo is not considered to be a very strong servant, but Astolfo is a very hack servant. Um, as evident by the very beginning where uh, she, uh, not she, he uses Trap of Argalia on uh, Spartacus and is able to completely remove his legs, right? And like she's actually able to affect someone that should be far stronger than him. So 
I'm just gonna leave her down here though because she's not supposed to be really strong. I'm just gonna keep calling it she, dude. I just can't. I'm too lost in this all. This <laughs> brother, I'm already gone. But <laughs> but like he, yes, he's supposed to be like a very weak servant. He's not supposed to be very strong. But like the way that Astolfo is supposed to be good is that he has like all these different NPs and like different hacks abilities to get around people. So pretty consistent for him to be this low. I mean, does just like straight up lose to people like Mordred. Like Mordred just kind of beats the dog out of him and. You know, Semiramis does one blast and knocks uh, Astolfo out of the sky. But, like, the point is that even though Astolfo is not strong enough to take down Semiramis, with his hacks and his, like, odd abilities, he's able to, like, keep in these fights. And then there's Jack. Jack is a little weird to scale, right? Because she doesn't really do a whole lot. She kind of has, like, this little scrap with Mordred where... She's doing pretty good against Mordred, like, and I think that's really her best showing because she tries to use her NP on Jean and it does like literally zero damage. She like coughs up a little bit. And considering that it's like an anti-female NP, it, you know, you know, it's pretty good for Jean that she's like able to tank that. Obviously that's because Jean has magic resistance EX. So she's able to just like pretty much completely shut that down. But it's just like, it kind of is just getting along the lines that like Jack doesn't really get very many good feats. Maybe you could look at it as a good thing. You're like, even though Jean has magic resistance EX, she still coughed up some blood from her NP, from Maria the Ripper. So if you wanted to be really charitable, maybe you could say that like with her NP on females, she should be in like this A plus tier. But it consistently, like she can box up people like Mordred. Uh, clearly wasn't going to win the fight, but she is able to... Um, to scrap a bit with her but then after that it's just like she gets shot in the back by Adelante and then releases the mist and then sucks everybody into that and i guess maybe would have beat Adelante through mind hacks because Adelante specifically has like this weird thing where she wants to protect all the children because of you know her childhood but i think it's just going off of like the most baseline feats we can she has a little scrap with mordred she doesn't just get obliterated. She kind of hangs in there. So I guess we could just give her this spot. But yeah, I think that's what the tier list is going to look like. Feel free to share it around on discords and get salty or something. Because, you know, you know, I know that's always going to happen. I know it's going to happen anytime you do these power scaling things. But this is looking pretty fine to me. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, um, you can come to my discord and, you know, come ping your boy and be like, hey, why uh why why is um mes so low it's just like well sorry it's just like fate apocrypha kind of popped off like fate apocrypha really popped off with the scaling they just made a lot of these like really insane characters and they pretty much just springboard off of fate stay night so it's just one of those things that like as the stories go on more and more a lot of the older characters if they don't continue to get better and better feats they're just going to look kind of worse by comparison. It's just like Dragon Ball. It's basics of power scaling. I don't know why I got to explain this, but it's just like, yeah, obviously as the series goes on, like Cell's not going to be as strong as people like Kid Boo or stuff like that. But yeah, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace late, guys.